review. This is one of our signature questions. What is one beauty product that you cannot live without? We got to know because I mean, look at you. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know, just lately I've been feeling like there's a lot of beauty products I'm really into. Um, geez, where can I even start? Well, what's one beauty product I cannot live without? <sighs> I'm super into um, the Jaclyn Hill palette right now. I know that's not brand new. I know it's been out for a little bit, but I'm like in love with that. Uh, I'm super into brow stuff, everything, you know, oh Anastasia, brow gels, really crazy about nice. that. Um, I discovered uh, on Amazon these um, like beauty blender sponges, but they're not the beauty blender because the beauty blender is 20 bucks and it gets really nasty really fast. But on Amazon, you can get like a pack of six and they're really good. Um, and they're like seven bucks for a pack of six. That's awesome. So, yeah. So look on Amazon, ladies, because you definitely want the beauty blender, which is, I mean, do you guys use the beauty blender? I haven't. Yes. I haven't used it in a while, but it, it's really good. It makes it like very smooth. It smooths out like all your makeup. Yes. It's like a little sponge, mm -hmm. a little pink sponge. And it's great to, you know, do the concealer and to smooth everything out. But yeah. it's even better when you can get like five for the price of one. So those are my beauty tips. <laughs> What? The tip that I use when I'm cleaning the beauty blender, because I, I clean that because it's $20, I'm going to use that for a while, <laughs> is the Johnson & Johnson baby wash. That cleans the beauty blender like perfectly. I That's don't know why. I just really cleaned smart. everything off it. I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> See, the, now I get them um, so cheaply. I just want that once they get dirty, I just throw them out. I just get a new one. <laughs> <I'll> a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So if yeah. you could have cocktails or mocktails with anyone living or dead, uh, who would it be? And what would you drink? And what would the topic of conversation be? Jeez, these are some interesting questions. I haven't been asked anything like this in a while. If I could have a drink with anyone, well, I'll tell you the drink I would have. Uh, right now I'm into this mocktail, which I mean, this is really sad. This is where I'm at with it, but it looks amazing. <laughs> when it's, if, yeah, that, that was sad. It's like a sip. Um, <laughs> it's called the shrinker and you can find it online. It's trim healthy mama. If you've ever heard of them and it's this oolong tea with, um, almond milk and cayenne pepper Mm. And you can have it hot or cold and you put a little vanilla in there and a little like stevia drops. And it's like this hot, like chai -ish kind of tea. I'm in love with the shrinker. <laughs> you got to try it. So is that delicious. delicious. Make you a city legend too? What's that? Like I'm trying to become a city legend, but I enjoy snack quite a bit. <laughs> well, the, the whole thing with these little drinks is they call them sippers because then you're not snacking all day. You're sipping all day. Ooh, that's, so it's, it's a great way to like have that flavor and that taste and also get a little caffeine, but it's better caffeine in the oolong than, you know, drinking coffee all day. And it's like this delicious, you know, if it's, if it's cold out, you do it hot and it's nice. And if it's hot out, you have an iced one. So I, I would have the sipper. Who would I hang out with? <sighs> I mean, it really depends on the mood, I think. And I know this might sound mm -hmm. weird because there's so many incredible people. Like I could sit down with Jesus and do all of that. But right now I would say the person that I've been thinking about is actually Meghan Markle. Oh yeah. I know. Oh my gosh. I, I have like mm -hmm. really been thinking about her and I would love to sit down and talk to her. Um, and I know this mm -hmm. might be kind of off topic of where we would go, but I don't know how you guys feel, but it's grieved me a little bit to see all the negative backlash. And I know. I've really Do been I... surprised, actually. I, I've, it, I've been surprised because, you know, part of what I do as a coach and, um, you know, I come from a really kind of successful background of television and film and all of that. And, you know, part of what I what I teach is that, you know, you can look so successful because you're making a lot of money and you're on TV. But how successful are you if like internally you're not feeling that successful? 
You know, if you're uncomfortable in your skin, if you're struggling with addiction, if you're dealing with depression, you know, then how really successful are you? And it's fine to have money and, and, and prestige and all of that. That's a part of success, but so is, you know, relational and spiritual and emotional. That's the full package of success. So, you know, all that to say, coming back around, I've been surprised when I've seen things on social media, how so many people are being so harsh and saying, oh, you know, they've got millions of dollars and they're complaining. It's like, really, are we that superficial that we really think that just because someone has millions of dollars? I mean, I personally think she was so vulnerable and like, just like really put it out there. And I don't know, I'm a little, I'm a little saddened by just the state of our world currently, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, it seems like everyone's wanting to be more, you know, more open and more, you know, inclusive, but then it's just harsher and and nastier than ever. So I don't know. I know that might be a weird answer, but I kind of want to like, kind of want to hug that girl and give her some support. And, (laughs) and um, yeah, that's who I would pick. No, I think that takes, I mean, it takes a lot of courage to even come out and say something like that, especially when you're in the public spotlight, let alone like, you know, just anybody in their everyday life, that's not an easy thing to do. So I think she's really brave for doing that. And she's going to help somebody else as much as people are like being rude and mean, there are probably girls that are saluting her and not feeling alone, which is what we need more is like sharing our stories because that's how we relate to each other. That's how we connect to each other. Absolutely. And the other aspect, which I, I again, I'm just surprised that people are, are so, in my opinion, being so kind of superficial about it. Mm. You know, we have no idea what it's like to live under that kind of scrutiny. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I've been around some famous people. Uh, you know, I worked with Prince for years. I've been around some pretty big celebrities And I would just say, you know, from my experience to have that kind of celebrity is the last thing I would ever want in my life Mm -hmm. because it is just hard, you know, and I don't care how many millions you have when you are, when the press is on you and you have no anonymity and you can't do anything and people are writing lies about you. And so it's like, I don't know, are people just so ignorant that you don't understand the kind of pressure that puts on a person, right? I know. That's where Mm -hmm. we have to have compassion and empathy because like you don't know what someone's going through unless you're in that situation. That's why we have to like think of it in that way. It's like, oh, if I was in that situation, like if I want to go get a cup of coffee, like I don't have to worry about someone shoving a camera in my face if I'm having a bad day. Exactly. You can have your hair in a bun and no makeup on and you can do that. Like, yeah, (laughs) right. Exactly. (laughs) So yeah, we just have to be a little more compassionate. Um, But to uh, go a little further with it, what would be, so let's say you guys have a girls night out, or maybe you're having a best girls night out with your friends or inside, what would you guys do? What's your ideal girls night in or out? My ideal, well, we'd have to like eat some great food, probably steak. I'm a big steak girl. So I'd have to go to a steak house and eat like a huge manly sized portion of steak. <laughs> um, <laughs> I can eat steak like a dude. I can eat like what, 16 ounces, bring it on. <laughs> so, yeah, we would definitely have some steak. Um, uh, maybe shop it up a little bit. I, you know, I don't, I don't hate that girly kind of stuff. Or if I want to be more, you know, Zen about it all, then we could like go take a walk on the beach, do that kind of thing. Um, I can kind of go either way. Nice. Yeah. Sounds very chill. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It's all about chill. Chill is the new formal now. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm not formal. I'm not like go out to like clubs or any of that. No, I'm like chill, hang out, eat some good food, have some good conversation. That's my thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can even do good food and uh, just reruns in pajamas oh. and I'd be like yes yes <laughs> <laughs> really though at this stage of the game where you've been in lockdown don't you want to get oh out of well it? yeah now yeah. but if I had some friends here <laughs> like a girl's <laughs> night that yeah. would change it up a little bit <laughs> I hear you totally so one to talk to besides my parrot who says the same thing over and over you gotta give you gotta give that parrot some more vocabulary yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you need to learn some new words <laughs> Naomi, you're the best. Naomi, you're the best. That's it. Positive <laughs> affirmations. I won't have to say that. <laughs> um, so recently you have filmed a movie that touches on sex trafficking. 
Can you tell us about your role and uh, what made you decide to take on such a project? Well, yes, I'm actually about to film and it started filming. It's filming right now and I'm leaving next week to go work on this project. It's called Pulled from Darkness. Wow. And um, I play um, I play a good gal. I usually I often play a bad, bad, the bad character because I look like I would be a vixen. Um, but I play the nice uh, the heroine in this one. Um, it's based on a true story of a woman who her husband was in a, um, a card game and got into debt and wound up basically giving his wife over as his debt. And um, these, these men that he lost the, the bet to went and kidnapped her in the middle of the night and took her into this whole horrific trafficking situation. Um, and I play a lawyer wow. who helps her when she gets out, when she, get, when she escapes, I help reunite her with her kids. Um, it's a beautiful story. And I really mm. think it's a, for such a time as this kind of movie, um, my sense is that, you know, we're seeing this happening. Um, we're seeing, well, it's been happening forever, but we're seeing in our culture, there's been more awareness, I think of, of trafficking lately. And I think there's going to be a lot more, actually. I think a lot of things are going to be mm. uncovered, um, in, in the months to come. I think there's going to be more of a spotlight on this topic, uh, I think a lot of us think it's maybe something that happens, you know, overseas or um, we don't recognize how prevalent it is in every community and uh, even in affluent communities. And uh, it's, it's just like a hidden underground topic that is now coming to light. So I'm excited to be a part of this movie and we'll see, you know, how, what, what kind of impact it has on the culture. Wow. Yeah. No, I mean, I think a lot of more uh, TV shows and movies are going to be coming out like that because it's very real. And I can't wait to see it. I mean, it's uh, when is it coming out? I'm not sure, actually, but I will. I'll let you know. Yeah, We're definitely. Now, so just gonna probably start the playing. end of the year, the end of 2021. Okay. Mm -hmm. that's, not, yeah. that's pretty well, almost a year, but time flies, right? It's been yep. flying yep. by. Uh, so <laughs> Rabia, we have to talk about Buffy. I know you probably get this a lot. I'm sure no everyone problem. brings it up, yeah. but what was the audition process like for Jenny calendar? Do you, do you remember, like, was it an offer? Like, tell us, tell us about it. I was, you know, sent the script to go audition for the show. The show had not yet been on the air, only the movie. So I, you know, had an idea about the movie, but no idea about the show. Um, because my character was in the very last episode of season one. So they were just filming it. It hadn't, it hadn't gone onto television yet. Um, but I do remember as soon as I read the script, I uh, thinking, wow, this is really good. This is really well written. It's so smart. It's so like sassy. And um, I just loved it. I loved the character. I loved the script. Um, I went in and read and um, oops, sorry, is that mine? Let me turn off this so my, my mail is not making sounds. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> um, <laughs> just always working, talking and working. Um, so I went in and read for the casting director. They had me come to a callback. And that's when I met Joss. He was there. And I read with um, Giles, who was my love interest on the show, Anthony yeah. Stewart Head. Um, but I had no idea who he was. And in my scene, when I read, it was Jenny and Giles, I was talking to Giles and I thought I was talking to a student because I was a teacher. <laughs> so I thought I was talking to like a 13, you know, 14 year old. And so I did the whole scene with that kind of tone, you know, where I was like more authoritative, where I was a little bit commanding and demanding and in that role. And then I went yeah. and I was reading with him and it just kind of shocked me because I didn't put all that together, but I just kept that same kind of thing, like that I was sort of in control of the situation and it just, it worked. We had a great little banter, a little cat and mouse. And, uh, and then they called me and offered me the job. And I think it was just supposed to be for that one episode, but um, they kept calling me back. So it turned into a lot of episodes. Yeah. And the chemistry between you guys was so, so good. I mean, like you just were like rooting for them. And, you know, do you, do you guys still stay in touch? Do you stay in touch with anyone from the cast? You know, we did for a while because the show was such a 
cult classic hit and it still is i mean it's yeah. it's it's incredible the longevity that this show has had even though it's been off the air for like 20 plus years um, I but after i finished the show i did do a little bit of the of the fan um like comic con type circuit mm-hmm. so you know a lot of us would would reconnect um when we did those. And so I would do the really good ones that were like in Paris and Rome and, you know, oh, I know, I know. So when nice. Yeah. When they were like, can you come to Paris for a Buffy convention? Yes. As a matter of fact, I can. I so can. yeah, I can. So I stayed in touch a little bit, but it's, it's been a lot of years now. I haven't done that in a while. So I'm not sure where the, the Scooby gang is, but sure. Everyone's doing well. Yeah. And you'll probably run into them at like an audition or something, you know, like it's, it's a small world and, you'll probably run into them when you least expect it. It is. I mean, I haven't been in acting. I actually retired from acting quite um, a lot of years ago, about 15 years ago. And I've started teaching and and coaching and authoring um, and honestly really had no intention of ever going back to acting, but it sort of came back and got me, you know, I, I, um, I wound up meeting someone randomly who was directing a movie a couple years ago and they wound up putting me in that movie and it's called unplanned. So I did that movie. And then uh, the director who saw that movie uh, reached out to me on Facebook about this movie pulled from darkness. And so now I'm kind of back in it. I had got a manager again and an agent again, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm back in the circuit. So nice. Just being very specific. (laughs) Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you've been a dancer, actor, writer, and you're also a coach and a mentor. Can uh, you tell us what inspired you to do that and what's been your most rewarding experience so far? Well, you know, when I came out of acting, it's kind of like what I said earlier about success. You know, I, I had a lot of success in, you know, what you would just deem as, as success when you look at it. Um, but I was struggling with some things. I was struggling with Uh, you know, being a woman, I think all of us get affected with body image and weight and, um, you know, comparing ourselves. And even though I'm on TV and I, you know, I looked thin and fit and, and my issue with food wasn't anything that you could see on the outside. It was definitely going on on the inside. So I was in that Mm. place where I was struggling and thinking about it, food and just, you know, not at peace. Um, So that kind of led me on a quest and on a journey to find like real success, you know, emotionally, physically, spiritually, in every way, shape and form. And through that journey, I found a lot of answers and um, got on a very strong spiritual path and quest. And uh, part of that quest was me recognizing that my issue with food wasn't really about food, that I was using food as a comforter. And it was really just a counterfeit comforter. And, you know, trying to deal with that from on that level, like trying to deal with the food issue or the cigarette issue or the alcohol issue or all of that, you you don't really have lasting results. You know, you try to will it, you try to will change, but really those problems are, are a product of a deeper root. And so if you deal with the root, the fruit of the problem changes. And often the root is that we don't know how to process things. We don't know how to deal with emotions. We don't know how to handle, you know, uh, trauma from the past or feeling rejected or abandoned or alone. So we run to the ice cream, we run to the cigarettes, we run to whatever. So, you know, I went through this whole healing transformation and, you know, learning how to kind of deal with those roots and get healed in the fruits. So part of that then turned into my book right here, if you can see that, Counterfeit Comforts. Um, And then really taking all these principles and tools that I learned and, you know, putting them in the book and then working with people live and in person. So actually now it's not as live and in person because of what's been going on, but I'm doing a lot of online. So I have a lot of uh, online coaching program. And actually, if anyone who uh, is watching right now, you can either get my book on my website, which is rubiascott.com, or I wrote a little free e-booklet, which is a good starter. It's like a a mini version and um, it can be a gift for you. It's absolutely free. You can also get that on my website and download that little gift if you are struggling with any counterfeits and you want some tips about how to conquer the counterfeit comfort of food or whatever counterfeit you're struggling with. So that's what I'm doing now. Love it. So you're so passionate. Like I can see how passionate you are when you're talking about what you do with the coaching and writing your book. Like 
literally you light up when you talk about it. So it feels, I can see that it's like a fulfilling path for you. It is. It is. Um, and yeah. I'm passionate about seeing people get free. Cause I hate, I hate feeling stuck. I hate bondage. I hate knowing that, um, you know, people have so much potential, but these kind of things just keep us locked in and not living our fullest potential. So I do get passionate about giving, um, you know, practical tools that, that help break off those bondages and get ladies really functioning in what they're called to do and in their purpose and in their passion. So that's my passion. So to go a little further with that, I know you talked about this a little bit, but you know, everyone's face challenges, we all do, and we all want to evolve, you know, so reflecting back on your own life, what was a challenge you faced, and this could be anything you feel comfortable talking about, and what were your learnings from that experience for yourself? What was a challenge that I faced? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, I think really kind of what I just shared, I mean, that was my biggest challenge was my relationship with food. Um, Yeah, that was a rough one. Uh, Constantly, you know, on a diet, um, thinking about food 24 seven, you know, being very restrictive with eating and then binging and getting a little bit into eating disorders and just feeling like one part of my life was really soaring. And then this other part of my life was not doing well. (laughs) So, you know, that was such a struggle. And I see so many women in that struggle, you know, so many women, I mean, it has nothing to do with your weight. You know, sometimes it's the thinnest, most beautiful women that struggle the most with their physicality and, and their body. So it has, it has nothing to do with, um, with how you look on the outside. So what do you think the, the root is like? So when people come to you or for yourself, because you talked about that, you're like, it's not about that. It's about something underneath that. There's something in between the lines, the root of the issue. So what would you say that is like the internal thing? The roots are usually not knowing how to process. And I just talked about this on a coaching call today. You know, for most of us, we did not grow up in a house where there was a lot of communication. Maybe you did it had that. And if so, that's incredible, but it's usually pretty rare. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of us were not taught to, you know, be connected with our feelings. We weren't, um, and it can even be the opposite. It can be where you were told, you know, suck it up and don't be such a big baby. Or yeah. maybe it was a tumultuous situation in the house where nothing was ever talked about. And then there would be like rage explosions and then nothing was ever talked about. So, you know, we have all of these dynamics and then we go to school and we learn all this stuff in school, but none of it teaches us about knowing ourselves. Yeah. And then, you know, if you, even if you take like a, a, a God path or a spiritual path, often that is about learning about God, but never learning about yourself. So, you know, for me, part of knowing uh, my spiritual journey and seeking God is, is the understanding that the more you know God, the more you know yourself. And the more you know yourself, the more you know God. And so, you know, that kind of all, that all ties together. So coming back to where, you know, your question, um, yeah, those roots, knowing how to, how to deal with whatever happened in your life. If it was divorce, if it was abuse, if it was feeling abandoned, neglected, um, uh, knowing how to deal with rejection, knowing how to deal with um, shame and, and things like that, that we just, you know, usually are not given a lot of um, tools about how to navigate that in our life. So, you know, when that stuff comes up, we don't know how to deal with those feelings. One of the sayings that I have, and it's in my book is you have to feel and deal in order to heal. I love that. That's so like, so straightforward and (laughs) like honest. Yep. You have to feel and deal in order to heal. And the feelings you're not dealing with are dealing with you. So you think you're not dealing with feelings, you know, you're shoving them down, but those feelings will drive you. They'll drive you into, you know, destructive behaviors. They'll drive you into addiction. So it's like, you've got to deal with those feelings. So that's what I help people do. That's what I did in my own life, learning how to process all of that. And now helping um, ladies walk through that and work that out. So. So beautiful. Thank you, my dear. So on top of that, What's a mantra that you live by daily? Uh, 
Gosh, it really depends on the day. <laughs> it depends on the day. Um, you have to feel and deal in order to heal is a good one. Mm -hmm. uh, lately, I would say I'm focused on trying to be present, mm -hmm. being aware of being present and uh, trying to be in the moment with what I'm doing in the moment and not allow myself to be continually distracted with this baby right here. <laughs> I call this like um, when I'm coaching, I talk about um, the automatic arm where you're doing things and you don't even realize it. And your arm automatically just reaches for your phone. And then you, mm -hmm. you'd like, before you know it, you're scrolling and doing things and you didn't even consciously make the decision to do it. Right. Yeah. But your automatic arm has like built a habit and it does things with like against your will. <laughs> so, totally. Right. It <laughs> so totally I'm, does. I'm, I'm consciously trying to like control my automatic arm so that I could sit and maybe even wait for something without having to look at my phone. I could just be present in my environment. It's so true. And it's so funny because Naomi and I went to this talk on Zoom yesterday and he talks about, his name is John Levi and he's a behavioral scientist. And he did this experiment. He's like, I want everyone to put down their phone right now. And he's like, tell me the third app on the bottom of your screen. And then he took a poll and then he said, okay, how many people got it right? And it was like almost 50, 50. Some people got it right. And some people got it wrong. So it was, you know, 50, 50. And then he's like, what time was it when you guys, and then you missed that. So basically what he was saying is we aren't present most of the time. Cause we only see things that we want to see. Mm -hmm. And I was just like mind blown. I was like, oh my God. I was like, I can't believe I got it wrong. I didn't notice the time. How many times did we look to look at the time? And then like 10 seconds later, we're like, wait, what time is it? I've done that so <laughs> many times. I can admit that. <laughs> yeah. And our, our capacity to, to retain and to be focused is being hijacked because of the screen time. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's <laughs> one of the priorities and the focuses of my life right now to try to be disciplined with the, the automatic arm and the screen time. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Oh, your phone keeps track. My phone oh, tells oh, me. Oh, I know. And I don't like that. I don't like when it tells <laughs> I know, me. Like, I, I, yeah. I don't like that. See, I also have a child though. So I, I can kind of kid myself because she's also on my phone. So, um, it's, you know, so it's hard to really calculate the exact time, but yeah. It's like, that wasn't me. <laughs> no, no, that was her. That was her. Yeah. So we just like to close it off with a couple of fun and light questions. All right. Uh, let me see. And what's okay. Uh, most let's do, what was the last thing you Googled? Do you remember the last thing you Googled today? <laughs> yes. The last thing I Googled was a quote because I used it in my teaching earlier and it's a good one. You're going to like it. It's a quote by Benjamin Franklin. And he said, hold on, let me, let me just grab it. Let me grab it because this is really good and I don't want to misquote it Yeah, mm, right here. He said, there are three things that are extremely hard, steel, a diamond, and to know oneself. Whoa. Mm -hmm. That's deep. Mm -hmm. I know, girl. Mm -hmm. That's so what that's you're going to hear. I like it. <laughs> Isn't that wow. good? Yeah. Really good. That's the last thing I Googled. Wow. And maybe sweaters okay, so, on Amazon. Maybe that too. Ooh, sweaters. Yeah, I maybe look up some cardigan, cozy sweater. some cardigan sweaters on Amazon. Yeah. Have you guys had luck with clothes on Amazon? Sometimes I try to do that, but I'm not quite, I can't, I haven't quite found that. Once in a while. I really like uh, this website called Boohoo. It's like in the UK, but they have like the best. They always have like an 80% sale. It's so good. Love that. You gotta check it out. Okay, they good. have everything, like sweaters, loungewear. Boohoo? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I've had like a uh, 50, 50 luck. Sometimes it'll come and you're like, wow, this is so nice. And then it comes and you're like, this is not what I expected. <laughs> I and she could not, not looking good. I know. I hear you. Yep. Or it'll be like much smaller than I thought. Cause I think it'll be like Asian sizes. Maybe. Okay. Oh, oh, this is yeah. a good one. Yeah. And um, what is something on your bucket list? 
Oh, I just realized, is my little name coming up on the screen like that? Yep. I oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't change it. Oh, that's okay. Okay. That was my meeting I was just doing. Okay. Um, what's on my bucket list? Mm -hmm. I would say traveling locations for sure. Mm -hmm. Israel, um, mm -hmm. Greece. Um, gosh, I love to travel. Spain. Mm -hmm. I would say those, those are my top bucket list destinations. Nice. Yeah. And uh, something people wouldn't expect to know about you. Hmm. Very mysterious. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Well, I'm kind of an open book, so I'm not super mysterious. Um, I think people are surprised, like when I'm a life coach, when if I tell them that, you know, back in the 90s, I danced with Prince and they Google that and they look it up and they see all these pictures of me with big, huge 90s hair and yeah. you know, next to Prince like that. That's that's kind of a cool thing. Not a lot of people can say that they traveled the world with Prince. So yeah. that's definitely like a cool thing to have going on. Um, anything else that's would be kind of secretive? I think you no. win with that. I mean, that, that is good, right? <laughs> you won. Yeah, I know. I know. You can't top that. Nope. Did you and guys Google? Uh, did you guys Google my Prince days? Yes, we did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Naomi, you want to uh, close it off? Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. Uh, so one last question or are we just closing it out? No, no. Um, one last question. One, yay. Um, what is one of your pet peeves? Gotta love this question. Oh, uh, yeah, I know exactly what it is. I mean, this may sound lame, but grammar. Uh, grammar mistakes mm -hmm. are a huge pet peeve. When people, uh, when someone texts and they misspell your and your, like with the no <laughs> apostrophe R-E, that huge pet peeve. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's my biggest one. I'm a grammar nerd. No, I get it. Yeah. They totally get it. That. Yeah. <laughs> like, Were you like, hey, what's that? Was I homeschooled? <laughs> no. Yeah, I, I, I'm like that too. <laughs> <laughs> and I was homeschooled. And everyone's like, you don't have to text in full sentences. I'm like, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> but I homeschool my daughter now. I was not homeschooled, mm -hmm. but I think I just have a love for language and, you know, being a writer and a communicator. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is kind of my gifting is, is communication. So I care about vocabulary, punctuation, and grammar. Yeah. I love it. Well, thank you well, so that's... much for being here. I feel like I could, we could talk to you forever. Thank you. I know <laughs> this was easy, breezy, and fun. Yeah. Super mm -hmm. fun. Well, thanks, ladies. I'm glad to get to meet you. And I will definitely fill you in on movie details when I know more. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Good luck. And um, yes, well, good luck. Enjoy it. Thank you. All right. Bless I'm you. Ladies. Bless you. Bless you. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Have a great week. Thanks. You too. Bye. This has been Beauty Cocktails and Girl Talk. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time. And who knows who we will have then. Shruti has been killing it with some interesting people. I'm excited. Bye, guys. Shoulder dance. Shoulder dance. Bye. <laughs>